In this video, you will learn how to set up an internal flow analysis using the SimScale platform. Let's first take a look at the geometry that you meshed in the last video. It represents the inner volume of a mixing pipe, which, for example, could be used in plant engineering. In the section view, you can see how it works. The air enters the pipe through the inlet on the left side. The airflow is then redirected and expanded before a second airstream joins from the right side. Finally, the resulting airflow is redirected again and leaves the pipe system through a global outlet. Running a fluid flow simulation of this part will allow us to understand the velocity and pressure distribution within the flow field. Based on these results, we can optimize the geometry of the pipe system. Here, the aim is to have a homogeneous flow at the outlet. Let's now switch back to the platform and set up our first simulation. For this, you need the mesh we created in the last video. First, select the project, which contains the mesh of the pipe system from the last video. You will find the project on the project list on the left side. Now, switch to the simulation designer by clicking the corresponding button in the main ribbon bar. To start the simulation setup, click on the Create New Simulation button in the middle column. This will open a window where you can specify a name for your simulation. After this, you can choose between several analysis types. Choose Fluid Dynamics on the left part of the menu and Incompressible Flow on the right part. Now you need to add a few further settings to describe the physical phenomena your simulation should consider. You need to select the turbulence model you want to use for your simulation. At this point, we have to make a small digression back to the fundamentals of fluid flow. Depending on its velocity, a fluid flow is either laminar or turbulent. For laminar flow, the motion of the particles of the fluid is very orderly, with all particles moving in straight lines. By contrast, turbulent flow is a flow regime characterized by chaotic property changes. This includes rapid variation of pressure and flow velocity in space and time. Because a direct simulation of these small turbulent structures would take too much computational power, we use mathematical models to predict turbulence. We choose the K-Omega SST turbulence model, which is suitable for most applications. Now we have to decide if we want to run a steady state or a transient simulation. In our case, we will run a time average steady state simulation. Maybe you noticed that while creating the simulation, we have added several new items to the project tree on the left side. This tree will guide us through the next steps. Please note that some of the items in the tree are optional. Now you need to choose under Domain which mesh you want to use for your simulation, and click on the Save button. The 3D window in the right column will be updated. Now we can start with the actual setup of the flow conditions we want to consider in the simulation. First, we will define the viscous properties of the fluid that will flow through the pipe system. Clicking on the Model section in the Project tree allows you to define the viscous properties of the fluid. Since we want to simulate air, we choose a kinematic viscosity of 1.5 e to the negative 5. If you want to simulate another fluid, you need to use the appropriate kinematic viscosity for that fluid. Next, we will set up the initial conditions. As you know, simulation is based on approximate solving of equations. This is done iteratively. Therefore, you need to define an initial state or so-called initial conditions. Normally, it is only necessary to define them for turbulence quantities k and omega. In our case, the correct values are 6 for k and 360 for omega. Now we should define the boundary conditions. You should remember the sketch from the beginning and define a boundary condition for every surface of the model based on how it behaves. To create a boundary condition, click on the Add Boundary Condition button. This will open a new menu in the middle column. Here you can give a name to the boundary condition. Choose the type and select faces you want to assign with this boundary condition. We will start with a large flow inlet. We choose a velocity inlet boundary condition and fixed flow velocity of 1 meter per second in the x direction. A second velocity inlet boundary condition will be assigned to the small inlet face with a velocity of negative 3 meters per second in the x direction. To specify the flow outlet, we will apply the pressure outlet boundary condition. We also have to define the remaining surfaces by choosing the wall boundary condition with default values. The next item in the project tree is numerics. This item contains all the settings that can be applied to the simulation tool regarding the algorithms and mathematical models which are used to obtain the solution. We will not touch this item. Instead, we'll use the standard settings which are fine for internal flow simulations. Now all simulation parameters are defined. Last but not least, we have to specify how the simulation should be computed and stored. For this, click on the simulation control item in the project tree. Change the end time value to 1000 and the time step length to 1. This means that the simulation tool will perform 1000 iterations. Now expand the menu by clicking on the detail button. Here you can specify the number of intermediate results which are stored. 
We are only interested in the final result, therefore we set this value to 1000. There are two additional options you should change. Select 8 cores for computing and activate Potential Foam. Now we are ready to start the simulation. Create a new simulation run and press the Start button to launch the simulation. The simulation will be started soon and you will get a notification by email when it is finished. Alternatively, you can also take a look at the progress bar. When the progress bar turns green, your simulation is finished. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. In the next video, we will interpret the results of the simulation together. Bye!